Hello everyone and welcome back to another Universe Sandbox video and today we're going to be checking out another one of your guys' solar systems. Today's system is from the user Black Hole Nerd, so a massive thank you to them for sending in their simulation. And their system is called the Kerbola System Reborn. So let's go ahead and see what they have prepared for us here. So there it is. Let's check it out. Here we go. Alright. Cool. Alright, let's go ahead and check out the... There we go. That should bring us the description. Okay, nice. Kerbin. I was just burst off the uh, Kerbal Space Program. I still have yet to play that, so I know none of the names from it. But here we go. Here we are. So, made by Black Hole Nerd. So, the system is, run is runnable, actually. That's pretty cool. Right. Do you keep it one second or else it may go into anarchy. The Kerbal System. A truly notorious system from the famous game Kerbal Space Program. Okay. With the practically stock mod Outer Planets mod. For in-game descriptions, go to the descriptions of the objects. Okay, right. So, Kerbal, the star itself. The system star. A G-type star, which is strangely dense, but otherwise normal. Okay, so now moving on to Mohu over here. So I can't read the bios with this thing up, though, which is a bit tricky. Um, a small, rocky, cratered planet, which spins very slowly. Hard to go to, hard to return. So let's just do that. We can close and open that. Moho figures in Kerbal mythology as a fiery place with oceans of flowing lava. In reality, however, it's much less interesting. Scientists speculate about possible ways to make it awesome, like in stories. Some of those ideas have led to breakthroughs in aerospace technology. There you go. Okay. Right, so now we can open this again. It's good you can open and close this, actually, because back in the day, once it was closed, it was closed, and you couldn't go back in. Right, next up we've got Eve. Purple. A large rocky planet with a thick atmosphere. Sulfur oceans and a very bad reputation due to being very hard to return from. Very hot and strangely purple. It has a moon as well. Gilly. Eve's singular moon. It is a small brown lumpy rock with a very drunken orbit and very low gravity. Okie dokie. There it is. So, okay, we can close this. Have a little read. It's considered to be almost a sister planet to Kerbin. Well, despite the purple and the toxic atmosphere. Extreme pressures and temperatures. Actually, it's not very similar at all, is it? Who are those people? Well, I guess it's kind of like uh, Venus being thought as a sister planet to Earth a long time ago. They thought it had an ocean below its clouds and stuff. But then we got there and we're like, hmm, that's not quite right. There it is, underneath. And then the moon itself. Due to a large amount of squint and ice strain associated with its discovery, wearing glasses has now become synonymous with being an accomplished astronomer. Okay. Small little object. 26 kilometers. That is tiny. Next up, we've got Kerbin itself here. So the main star of the game, I'm guessing. Again, I've never played the game, so I genuinely do not know. This is all alien to me. Um, Hathable planet with strangely dumb sapient species on it. The Kerbals, which have somehow already achieved earth breath in rocket engines and decent space planes. They've also discovered steam power after rockets. Okay. Is the moon the moon, is it? Yeah. The moon with a lot of craters has a perfect orbit, which makes it a uh, single one transits an eclipse. Nice, very cratered, isn't it? It's a good looking cratered combo. How's he done that? I have to look at the textures on that. And then Minimus. A small moon with an inclined orbit, which may or may not be made out of mint ice cream or glass or ice. Always has a low gravity, which makes it easy to land on. Nice. So, it's often mistaken as dirt on telescope lenses or dead pixels, but the top. Mines at the Kerbal Astronomy assume it's a real moon nevertheless. There it is. It's quite a nice looking colour as well, the way that one's been designed. Uh, the Mun here. So the, dis the discovery of this is one of the most important breakfalls of Kerbal Evolution. Granted, it didn't happen that long ago, but it's still fair to say the Kerbals are wiser and more evolved than they ever were. So what textures is this using? Let's have a look. The Moon and Callisto combo. That's a very created world. Oh my god. And the planet itself. I need a description for that. Unique world. It has flat plains, soaring mountains, and wide blue oceans. Home to the Kerbals. It has the right conditions to support a vast, seemingly unpleasable population of the eager green creatures. Reaching a stable lot around Kerbin is one of the first things the bubbling space program strive for. It is said that those who can get their ship into orbit are halfway to anywhere. Okay. Maybe this is a system we should evolve from birth to death. That'd be interesting. Um, next up, we've got Duna. Is this the Mars equivalent? Let's have a look. A medium sized planet that has very large poles and a thin atmosphere. That's all it is. Okay. Also known as a red dot, you can see if you squint really hard. It has long been a wonder 
to Kerbal Kind, the planet has been held in much awe due to its striking red colour and stark contrast to the colour green. So this is basically the Mars. It even looks like Mars as well. It has a moon as well. It reminds me of that old picture of Mars where you can really see the North and South Poles. It's pretty cool. I like it. A relatively large grey object seen orbit in Duna. Scientists have um, guessed that it is seemingly perfectly positioned to sneakily interfere with any object that presumes to come near the planet. Alright. Nice. Okay, um, so next up we've got Jewel. Is this a gas giant? There's an object here called Dre's Theoretical. What's this? It's a very small planet. It was the first planet to be a dwarf. Its orbit is highly irregular. Together with its size, took a long time to discover. Since half the time, it is not where scientists expected to find the planet. Due to its nature of frequently the bad parts of space, this small planet is often labelled as not to be trusted by the scientific community. <laughs> so is it there or is it not there? Well, it is there for us. Right, Jewel, gas giant. Very green. Very, very green. Nice band design. Let's have a look. Where's it? There's uh, bands. Not too many as well, but it looks pretty nicely done. So, Jewel. Where are we? Big and green is a gas giant, which is very green. Okay. Moons. Hatsby Moon, which is very salty oceans, tidally locked by Jewel, has cryovolcanoes. Okay, we've got Val. An icy moon with a subsurface ocean. There's like Europa. Next moon we've got Tylo. A very, very large moon, which is way too big and somehow has no atmosphere, so it's hard to land on. Why does this why do we let this object exist? Okay. Then we have Bop here. A rock with a very large crater and a weird green thing on it. That is a very bizarre looking design. And pole. Looks like pollen, that's the name. Okay. Nice. Let's have a look at the descriptions. Jewel is particularly known for being rather large, predominantly green planet. Kerbal kind of longed to visit since it was first spot in the sky. For Loster's reason, the swirling green planet must be really nice to visit on account of its wholesome coloration. Yeah, I wonder what gas is that actually is. Uh, moons. When it was discovered, it has entered the world. Not entered because I thought they were looking at the Kerbin planet. Luckily, this error is corrected, and the plucky intern informed that the telescopes don't work that way. The intern was shortly promoted and moved to the experimental rocket testing program. Okay, so all the hidden lore in this game was just made up. Uh, uh, pretty interesting. Val was one of the last moons of Jewel to be discovered. Frustrated scientists kept attempting to wipe it off the lens of their telescopes. Eventually, after a Russia returned telescopes, optics finally decided that it was an actual object in the sky. Tylo, first moon to be discovered. After many failed attempts to take a flawless picture of Jewel to hang on to the office walls, and finally discovered that the wandering white smear was indeed a moon. Scientists speculate the view from the surface, with um, all of them overhead, must be quite cool. Okay. All right, they kind of lined up as well, aren't they? So if you were, if you were to land on the gas giant's higher clouds here, have a little look up, you can see the moons. There you go, one, two, three. Pretty cool. A little line up there. You get the Jupiter vibes from this one, don't you? So there you go. All right. Moon is hard to spot. Looks like a pollen grain when there's earthy telescopes. Okay. And this one as well. Bobby's be the home of the Kraken, the mischievous creature said to play at the ships of heartless explorers. I'll spin them out of control, cast them into oblivion. Okay. Bop. Right. What's next? Sarnus. This is the Saturn analogue, I'm guessing. We'll read this first before we can go to the main bio. Early astronomers believed Sarnus was in fact multiple planets closely orbiting together. When they cleaned their telescopes, they realised that those extra planets were in fact thin rings orbiting the Sarnus. This is how, um, I believe it was Galileo thought Saturn was originally a, planet, a triple planet system. A long, long time ago, when Saturn was first discovered, or first observed, I should say, by, uh, I think it was Galileo, I believe they thought it had it was a triple planet system, but it was actually just the rings making it look like that with those old, old telescopes. Okay, pretty cool. So there it is. And we have this object. Discovered in the same time as Plot, the square heads in charge of calculating astronomical discoveries mix up the records of two celestial objects leading to years of one being fused to the other. The surface has been covered in brown scratches that could result in the cryovolcanic activity. This might mean the moon's harbors a liquid ocean beneath its frozen crust. Cool. Next moon out. Got slate. 
Evidence suggests it had an atmosphere only a few million years ago until an unknown cataclysm stripped the atmosphere away, leaving only a dry husk behind. Its yellow and brown colours have inspired many painters since its discovery, including Vincent van Kerman. <laughs> Lastly, this moon here. Tech-co? Tech-co? Tech-2. This moon is a very dense atmosphere for a body its size. Combined with low gravity, this means that a Kerbal with wings attached to its arms could lift off from the surface of the moon under his or her own power. Those wings will be made of some sturdy materials, though, as this atmosphere appears to be very violent. Cool view of the gas giant there as well. A little look underneath. Very thick atmosphere, you can't see anything. Oops, wrong button. Oh, I wasn't going to press that. No! I've blown him up. Oh, dear. Well, that moon's gone. Anyway, if you wanted a view of the gas giant from a destroyed moon, that's what you get. <laughs> ah, it looks similar to that of the atmosphere switched off anyway. But we've blown it up. Oh dear, sorry. Wrong button. <laughs> I wanted to press visuals and then go to the atmosphere, but no. Oh dear. Whoops. Whoops, it is. There he goes. <laughs> oh yeah. Total accident, but we've blown it up. Nice visuals, though. <laughs> there it is, it's gone. Alright, so who's next? Destroyed moon later. It's not that, that was Sarnus, wasn't it? Is there any description for Sarnus here? The crown jewel, a long-sized jewel of the system, has luminous rings and a few moons. So hail, a rock which keeps the harvest gap. So it's a gap in the rings clear. Okay. Oh, these are these small ones here. I didn't even notice those. Hard to land on due to its lumpy shape and being so close. We've got Ovok, an oval object shaped by Sarnus. These are like shepherd moons. By looks things. We've got Elu here, an icy moon which expels material, feeding the rings. Kind of like Enceladus, maybe. Or Triton, you know, feeding a bit of material out into space. Hmm. Then there's Slate there. Big moon that once had atmosphere effects. That's all we knew. And then the last world, which we blew up. Thick methane atmosphere and oceans gone. That's the Titan we've blown up, basically. Next up, we've got Erlum here. An ice giant which spins retrograde, has faint rings and some weird moons. This is definitely the Uranus look. So, is the actual system in the game then actually based off our system with like a lot of the planets? are very like based, you know, because they're similar, aren't they? It's pretty cool though. So, but anyway, Polter here. A moon which has been shaped by the gravity as a weird orbit. Due to Priax, not pictured. A small or arc orbiting in Polter's L4 Larange point. Or was it L5? Actually, I, I don't know what that means, the Larange point. I, I don't know. <laughs> then we've got Wow over here. A big walnut shaped moon with very interesting colours. There it is. It has its own little moon as well. A moon moon of Wow. Okay. So let's see any of the bios of these. No bio for this one. Okay. Instantly recognisable due to its walnut-like shape. Its multicoloured surface has led to winning the title most beautiful moon of the year two years in a row. Its distinctive Victoria Ridge is likely to be caused by tidal forces created by Wall's Moon Tau. A little one there. Polter here. Sadly has to be excluded due to lag. I don't know what that, what that is. What's a Lagrange point? I, I don't know. I've never heard of that. Mint coloured appearance immediately reminded astronomers of Minimus, but it was quickly realised that it's still in orbit of Kerbin and this has to be another body. Polter surface is made of a smooth and swirling terrain forms, most likely a result of tidal heating caused by the nearby Urlum. It shares the orbits of its larger cousin Polter, making it curved to a configuration. The strange orbit is stable because Perex is located in the liberation point of the larger Polter. It's also characterised by a heavily cratered surface, which makes it result resemble a lump of cheese, whether the surface is edible or not is yet to be confirmed. Ooh, okay. <laughs> and moving on to the next object out. Is this the Neptune equivalent? It's pretty far away. It's very purple. There it is. Due to its distance from Kerbin, it wasn't until fairly recent that Kerbal kind of discovered this Kerbal system's most distant planet. As scientists thought Needon would not be a purple, rocky planet like Eve, they realised it was actually a gas giant, ice giant. Nice. Moon here, we've got Fatmol. Number one destination on the Daredevil's Aviator bucket list ever since. It rotates in the opposite direction around the planets. This is your Triton kind of uh, moon there. It's got one more over here. It is truly, truly nice. A small moon inclined in eccentric orbit. 
Its surface looks strangely similar to a marble. As a result, it has become the envy of the sculpture on Kerbin. Okay. Nice. So what does the main description say for these guys? Purple ice shunt, which is very cool looking. Very nice. Fatmar, a retrograde moon, which has a thin atmosphere and nice surface. And Nissi is the, the wonky... Yeah, okay. So lastly, Plock. This is Pluto, I'm guessing. Yeah, it looks like a Pluto orbit. Okay. The dwarf planet is still surrounded by controversy due to salty Plock fans on internet videos. What the heck? <laughs> then we have Karen. The major moon is big enough for the brightest centre to be outside both objects. That's Pluto and Charon. Charon there. Uh, Okay. And theoretical objects. We've got Drays. A theoretical dwarf planet that might be there. Is it there, though? I don't see any name for it. If it is there. D R E U. Where is that? Oh, that's the one we saw earlier. Okay. All the way back in here. Okay. So let's go back to these guys. So we've got Pluto Caron analogues here. So that's everything on the description. There's been a considerable amount of controversy concerning the status of Plock as being a proper planet or just a lump of ice going around the sun. The debate's still going, going as most academic summits held. The address they have devolved onto on good days, petty name calling on worse, all out rules. Okay. Let's look at this actual radius, for instance. I mean, 1890. I mean, that's. If you compare it to, say, where are we? It was a good. Callisto. Look, it's smaller than Callisto's. So it's not even Mercury level. If we were to compare it to, say, Kepler 37b. Do I still have Kepler 37? I don't think I do. That thing is about the. That's only about the size of Io. Kepler 37. So, technically, you know, this is large enough to be a planet. Kepler 37b is, and that's roughly the same size as Io. And um, Europa's a little smaller, isn't it? So, I know it's around the Io size. So, technically, this. If you ask me, it's large enough to be a planet. There's no other objects blocking its orbital path, so... Technically, yeah. I'd say maybe, yeah. Let us know in the comments. Do you think that's a planet or not? I mean, I would say, the size-wise, it is big enough. But it's... Does the moon make it... Making it a binary system with a barrier centre out of the central planet, does that make it not a planet? There's a lot of all weird rules and regulations there, but, you know, what do you think? Let us know. It'll be an interesting debate if it's a planet or not. <laughs> As your bodies dance around each other, so it's literally a barrier center kind of object there. Nice. So that was a basically the Kerbal Space System system. Very nice. I've never seen it before, so quite cool to see it. Actually, no, someone may have submitted one years ago, actually. I do recognize the name Jewel. I've definitely seen that before for the Jupiter, the green. Interesting, though. But there we are. So that does it for this system. So a massive thank you to Black Hole Nerd for sending in their simulation. Let us know what you think down below in the comments. I'm sure there's many, there's obviously many things about this game I don't know about, so uh, feel free to make fun of me about it, because <laughs> I've never ever, I've ne barely ever seen any footage of it, I've never played it, so yeah, let me know, I'm sure you guys can educate me in the comments as well, <laughs> but with that all said and done everybody, hope you all enjoyed this video, if you did, let's even go for 100 likes on it, and yeah, that all said and done everybody, subscribe, help us on journey to 50,000 subscribers as well, and yeah, make sure you have a great day out there, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next video, goodbye.